Good morning, everyone. Ah, it's another beautiful day here. I'm going to put another video on, hopefully. <laughs> I feel like it. <laughs> to uh, uh, make a video, because uh, my husband asked me, oh, can you... We walked around the garden yesterday, and I showed him everything, you know, how it's coming up, and what needs to be done, and what I'm kind of hoping for, and, and uh, you know, and he's like, because it's so uh, after we were done, kind of with the tour, I just in here, he says, can you just make a video? <laughs> and, oh, it's a good idea. Um... I, I, it amazes me that people go to certain things, like, for example, a petting zoo, a zoo, and obviously notice that, or maybe they don't, <laughs> what you're there for, <laughs> that the animals aren't properly cared for. Uh, a lot of animals aren't loners, especially domestic animals. They're not loners. They're not meant to be just by themselves. And animals can get depressed. And how do they show their depression? They lay around, they're listless. They, they just take it. They just take the abuse from whom they can. It's, it's, one thing to me is don't have animals if you are not 100% committed on taking care of them, taking responsibility for them. And that, that doesn't necessarily mean, you, you okay, it, it's, you know, let your heart to mind speak to that right? when, when, uh, and get informed, right? yes, and how to keep certain animals properly, happy, productive, right? that where there's a good give and take going on. What amazes me, though, is on how people just walk past that and don't do anything. But there are other people out there right, who rescue animals like that. You have to go through this and that. And, you know, just, just, right? Yes. How difficult is it to actually rescue an animal right, that well, the owner doesn't feel like anything's wrong with it, right, for example. Right. Wow, children. Well... The thing is, when you notice stuff like that, then you're going to have to be prepared uh, to take responsibility as well. And that is why people don't want to notice, right? Yes. Got enough to do in my life. Can't care about that. Well, anyway, so another thing that I saw, well, I had to put that on my Facebook page. Is uh, Target and how they're, uh, you know, again, the, the pride things. I, just, it, it just, I couldn't care less what you want to call it, this, that, I don't know what. But again, <clears throat> this lady, young lady. Uh, huh? First of all, I'm going, yes, there's a young lady. A young lady, a young woman, right? Don't know if she has children yet or whatever. Doesn't look like it. No. Who uh, says, well, I'm going to go and check out. All the hype was being, yeah, and sure enough, she found things. She said, uh-uh, no, mm -mm, no. Why is a store huh, like Target targeting the bodies of children with absolutely sexualizing their bodies at that age? With uh, ideas. I'm not getting that. I have no idea why a store would do that. No idea. But you know, for me, one thing, I used to like to go and shop at Target. Okay, I haven't shopped anywhere and I can't even remember. <laughs> okay. Besides, I like secondhand stores. <laughs> uh, but as a proper human being, I see something like that and here is uh, a commoner, uh, not not uh, somebody that wants to make money off of this video now, this or that, and I don't know what. It's to alert the people. I went, I looked, this is what I found. Right? And, uh, oh, well, that would be the absolute, that is the absolute end for me to support a store like Target. Done, done. 
Yeah, but where does one, well, can you guys not? It's, it's really one's own comfort and what you want rather than what you need more important than protecting our children out there against stuff like that. You see, you support one little thing like this. And right there. Now you're becoming a part of the collective sin of people who, oh yeah, 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 right? And other people with not such good intentions see your child that you, the store's grooming you to groom your child for who to see what you're doing with your child's body, what you're dressing your child's body in. Hmm? What message is that giving people out there who couldn't care less? about the safety of your child who are going to use and abuse that child if they get their hands on it and you initiated that you did so I have my say on that let's get started and interestingly enough we're coming to <laughs> which um yeah, it was interesting that this is coming up again because I think they talk, they just talk a lot. It's amazing to me on how much the Old Testament talks about the conjugal relationship between a man and a woman. Yes. 24 in Deuteronomy. Divorce. I am divorced. Yes. Still call my husband my husband. He's still, we're still, we've got four children together. You can't just run away from each other. <laughs> Besides, I still live in the home we built, right? Yes. <laughs> so we get to see each other fairly often. And we get along to snap. Uh, yeah, I have this idea of that, that something could be restored there. And I have to admit, I'm the one who initiated the divorce. I feel to this day, that it was a very, very difficult decision for me to make. Uh, but it was one of those things where I had to say, I can't continue to live like this. And neither should my husband. And uh, because it wasn't going to get better, it just was going to get worse. And I didn't want to live the rest of my life in this just depressed state of <sighs> difficult to describe, just acceptance of something that I just didn't want to be a part of anymore. And the best route for that I saw to set my husband free. Done. Yes. So, that's what I did. And I know, I'm, I, for myself, I have to say again, eh, was that mean in the physical? Am I spiritually divorced from my husband? Yeah, I don't think you can do that. We made a promise uh, at some point, right? Yes. And so, there is that. But, still working on that. No? Well, we're in this now. Let's see if I'm getting some enlightenment, right? Yes? Okay. Divorce. Suppose a man has taken a wife and consummated the marriage, but she has not pleased him, and he has found some impropriety of which to accuse her. He has therefore made out a writ of divorce for her and handed it to her and then dismissed her from his house. She leaves his home and goes away to become the wife of another man. Then suppose the second man who has married her takes a dislike to her and makes out a writ of divorce for her and hands it to her and demisses her from his house. Or if this other man who took her as his wife dies, her first husband who has repudiated her may not take her back as his wife now that he has been made unclean in this way. For that is detestable in Yahweh's eyes and you must not bring guilt on the country which Yahweh your God is giving you as your heritage. Okay. So basically, okay, well, I never, I was married once, I <laughs> divorced once, that's it. 
<laughs> not planning to get married again to anyone for that matter I'm not interested at all because again uh, even though I had my journey after the divorce in a certain sense yeah, as well where again now you're suddenly free but how free are you really right yes I had to learn my lessons there as well <clears throat> and of course I still, I just became a single mom, but then I had kind of been a single mom for years and years before my divorce, right? Yes, so no big deal, but I stayed. I stuck it out, stuck it out. There's no way I would would have ever just, like, no, no. <laughs> <coughs> so I, I happily finished up my responsibilities and care for my children until they moved out, did their own thing, started their own families, this and that, right? Yes, was here when they, one of one or two of them needed to come back home for a little while, <laughs> okay. And of course, took care of what? Everything that was left behind by everyone, right? Yes, but happily, that's the thing. Uh, so, can my husband still take me back? Okay, it doesn't, can I still take my husband back? <laughs> it doesn't mention that, it's all up to the guys. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Don't, no. I have no idea. I have to, I've got to believe in the, I have to believe in the restoration process and that there is a, a very specific reason for that. Oh, for myself, right? So when I go to spirit world, that look better, this and that. Absolutely not. I believe we go through certain things in our life and then, as I said, if you try to find the right path through it, it's very beneficial for our ancestors because one has to ask, why am I carrying such burdens on my back? I'm a good person. I have the best always in mind for everyone and everything around me. I feel like I've really done. I have tried to please, you know, what needs to be needed to be pleased in every area. And yet, that still wasn't enough. Right? So what burden do I carry for my ancestors? Blood lineage is important, obviously, in some way. Right? And then, of course, my descendants. Oh, okay. Well, that's not my problem, what happened in the past. I'm just going to go plow ahead however I want to, right? Or, right? and then hand over the burdens from the past to my children, my grandchildren. Right? Well, I don't want that either. <laughs> so, of course, I'm going to try every which way to see, okay, and how do you do that? You do that with the word of God and you listen and you are what? Obedient. Right? Ten Commandments. Try to be as obedient as you can to the Ten Commandments. Right? And things happen. Things will start to happen. Yes? Ugh, it can take a long, long time. Right? Yes? I found that certain things happen. I see oh, a glimmer of hope somehow. You know, so, yeah, that's I think that maybe over all these years now that we've been divorced, there has been some changes, you know, this, and then something will happen. Can, no, no change. <laughs> or I'm not seeing the change, right? Yes. I kind of have to leave that up to him. Yeah. My willingness is there. But, all right. So, the rest, I, you know, again, I think uh, it's difficult to, on something like this, it's really difficult to have an overall kind of opinion, right? because this is a, such a intimate area of two people, right? Really, when it comes down to it, I don't know, was it at that time again? Who does it talk about, and who gets to make the decisions this now, right? And how easily can it be done over, right? It doesn't really say, maybe it says later, you know, so what these offenses could be. I'm not sure. 
people fall in and out of love, you know, like they change their underwear, really, when it comes down to it. But for a lot of people, it's like that. And uh, so, I'm not sure. Divorce is kind of like that, too. <laughs> I'm not thinking that's me. And of course, now, today, it goes both ways, right? Yes? But interesting, at that time, I don't know. What if the... Okay, I'm not going to go there. I don't know. Protection of the individual. If a man is newly married, he must not join the army, nor must he be pestered at home. He must be left at home, free of all obligations for one year to make his new wife happy. <laughs> a year-long honeymoon? <laughs> Interesting, right? Hmm. No one take may take a mill or millstone in pledge. That will, would be to take life itself in pledge. If anyone is caught having kidnapped one of his brother Israelites, whether he makes him his slave or sells him, that thief must die. You must banish this evil from among you. Hmm. Again, how does this happen? And then, wait, 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 wait. So, but here's the thing. If, remember about the girl huh? out in the countryside? If a guy goes and forcefully yeah, rapes her, then uh, he has to marry her. So, but according to this, obviously, he must have, he, that, that's a sort of kidnapping, but <laughs> it's, we've got a problem here again, guys. How are they sifting through this maze of whatever they're given here and will make the appropriate? People are so crafty. They were crafty at that time. They're crafty today, right, when it comes to these kind of things. Yes? In a case of a virulent skin disease, take care you faithfully observe. Take care you faithfully observe and exactly carry out everything that the Levitical, Levitical priests direct you to do. You must keep and observe everything that I have commanded them. Remember what Yahweh your God did to Miriam when you were on your way out of Egypt. Uh, yeah, but that, <laughs> wait a second, but what does that have to do? In that case, God gave Miriam the, 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 the disease, right? Yes. But this is a virulent skin disease. You can pick that up. Well, I gotta beware with unclean things, right? Yes. You could get sick. Yeah. Your skin will, huh? you can't see anything on the inside. You know, at that time, for sure not, but the skin will show certain things. Right? But I'm not sure what the, what the, remember what Yahweh your God did to Miriam. It's, it's, okay, that that's a whole different case right there when it comes to that, isn't it? So that's what I'm noticing. We all know, so we already read everything, on, okay, on how to take care of that, this and that, blah, blah, blah. But that's an odd one again here, right? Yes, and how that's put in here as a second, the second time around to reinforce the, the all the, 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 the laws and the rules and this snap for the Israelites, right? <clears throat> and what they're using. To make their point, uh, which go, oh, that well, that doesn't make any sense here. That point wouldn't make any sense. That's a was a completely different area of of uh, punishment in a way. Uh, so everybody who gets a skin disease is is that's a punishment or something. And <laughs> if you are making your brother alone on pledge, you must not go into his house and seize the pledge, whatever it may be. You must stay outside, and the man to whom you are making a loan must bring the pledge out to you. And if the man is poor, you must not go to bed with his pledge in your possession. You must return it to him at sunset so that he can sleep in his cloak and bless you. 
and it will be an upright action on your part in God's view. Oh, now that is an interesting one. Oh, I could, I could talk a lot about that. This is again, this is where, where is your heart to mind? Where is your conscience? And you're looking at the situation of another person and going, okay, well, I did, did this, 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 this for them. So, I, well, I'm, I'm going to go and look for some of it now, right? right? You know, isn't it interesting? I found that in people. I found that in myself as well until I learned better. Or I had experience where to say, okay, that, I don't want to be a part of this. This is, irks me way too much. Right? And it's not going to change anything. It's just something within me now that it's starting to fester and rot. And that is when you have given something to someone and there is an expectation, there, is, there has been a loan, there is a deal or something, and then there is nothing happening right, from the other side. Nothing. It's like it's been forgotten. You're going, well, I haven't forgotten. You see? Yes? And here God says, okay, don't take that home with you and sleep with it under your pillow. Just bring it back. Let, that's not your problem. Remember what your problem is. That's not your problem. That's that person's problem. You've already done your part. Now, just be content with that. That's God's point of view. Right? Yes? Does God ever come and expect anything back from us when, it, when so much is given? Well, what does our Father in Heaven, our Heavenly Parents, expect from us? All right, you projected that right back to God, didn't you? To treat each other properly. To treat each other in the best possible way. And with our own heart to mind and conscience to know Right? What that is. Yes. How to behave properly. Right? Yes? Okay. Right. That's a good one. I like this one. I think I'm going to mark this one. Right? This isn't just about alone stuff you're giving, you want back. Right? Yes? This is about also the give and take that people have with each other. And if one party isn't willing, then you're going to have to let it go. You have to. <laughs> There's no other way. Unless you want conflict, war. And who knows what goes with that. And then what? Was that worth it? Whatever you didn't get back? Okay. You must not exploit a poor and needy wage earner, be he one of your brothers or a foreigner resident in your community. You must pay him his wages each day, not allowing the sun to set before you do, since he, being poor, needs them badly. Otherwise, he may appeal to Yahweh against you, and you would incur guilt. Whoops. Parents may not be put to death for their children, nor children for parents, but each must put to death for his own crime. You must, oh, this is something as well. I've, I've heard this so many times again in certain places around the world where when the parent dies and still has a debt. In our country, thankfully, it's not like that as far as I know. It wasn't like that. I mean, they changed a lot in the last so many years and who knows, right? But that, yep, when, when uh, uh, the parents pass away and they have, taken out on that they go after the children and the children are just as responsible huh, for what the parents did huh? yes hey maybe to even send them to school with this or that huh? yes and uh, often young lives are destroyed with that huh, uh, incurred debt of the parents yet here in the bible it says nope you don't get to do that Everybody individually is what responsible for. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting one, isn't it? Yes. There you go. Or another one too, when uh, the stigma attached to a child when mother or father are in jail. Or if father and mother or, or mother right, or have murdered someone, killed someone. And they're regarded now as a murderer's child. 
I find that absolutely horrific. That pe well, how, how do people even come up with stuff like that? Tell me. <laughs> Again, thank God there's so many good in this country. We have everything in this country. The help for anyone is out there. When it comes down to it. To what? Oh, do whatever you want, this in every direction. It doesn't matter, good or evil, or right or wrong. This, no, no, no. no. To, to eh? reactivate the proper sense, common sense, and human beings. Eh? What every human being is entitled to. And that is, eh? you're innocent until proven guilty. And what, just because your parents have done something that makes them guilty, they incurred guilt, doesn't mean the child automatically is guilty then here on earth. What did I say earlier? Yes, we do. We do carry the burden of our ancestors' eh? unfinished business, per se. Their spirit's still growing. Yes, that is. That is in the spirit. It works a little bit differently, but not in the physical. In the physical, we have no right to judge and persecute a child over what the parents have done. We're not. And there are still places in this world where that is still, and no doubt, here too. You don't get to do that. Not if. Not if. You have an honorable sense still going within you. Yes? Okay. Well, anyway, it's a, this is a good one too. You must not infringe the rights of the foreigner or the orphan. Oh, you must not take a widow's clothes in pledge. Remember that you were once a slave in Egypt and that Yahweh, your God, redeemed you from that. That is why I am giving you this order. If, when reaping a harvest in your field, you overlook a sheaf in that field, do not go back for it. The foreigner, the orphan, and the widow shall have it, so that Yahweh your God may bless you in all your undertakings. I find it incredibly weird that when a husband passes away, and a widow now with children, this or that, even if you're elderly as a woman, you're barely giving the minimum to live. Barely. And I think this is one thing as well, where then God's really cautioning, beware. If people end up alone on their own and lose their protection, you don't get to abuse that. Rather, you make sure that even, uh, and, and let the help be given in a, <coughs> where people don't have to beg. Because what if it were to happen in your family? Would you not want people, right? if needed then, to help your family? Remember what I said about the coal miner accident that they had here? So many of the guys passed away. And the families afterwards, the widows and the children, had to just somehow make do. They lost their breadwinner. They lost the person that... Right? Help sustain them as well. Besides, lost, lo lost a loved one, a father, a husband. Right? Yeah? How difficult it became for the women. And when you have children, <laughs> as a mother, you got to be there with the children. What's happened to that? Right? Yes? And so many children now are exposed to having to be left home alone. Mom has to go to work. Okay, well, that has other... I'm not talking about other situations. This and that, as I said, you know, if as men, you don't think you're involved in all this, well, I don't, I don't know. Hey, who knows? Maybe all them children just pop up out of nowhere. Right? All these women you know, conceived you know, like Mary did you know, as a virgin. You know, miraculous conceptions all over the world. You know, just saying. That's it. I hear you guys out there talking, and I don't want to hear it. Or 
coming back with the but and ifs and I don't know what. <laughs> I'm going to hear it. Take responsibility for your women folk. Uh, <laughs> when you beat your olive oil, olive tree, you must not go over the branches twice. The foreigner, the orphan, and the widow shall have to rest. When you harvest your vineyard, you must not pick it over a second time. The foreigner, the orphan, and the widow shall have to rest. Remember that you were once a slave in Egypt. That is why I am giving you this order. That's the end of 24. And again, it amazes me on how people have to be reminded. Even at that time, they had such a, for so many hundreds of years, right? Yes, this lamentable life, right? And they have to be reminded of that lamentable life in order to be good to others who, right, what? are encountering some hard times. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, what did I start out with? One should not walk past suffering. And it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Don't walk past suffering. Don't support anything that could lead to suffering. Especially of a child. Especially of a child. Okay. Yes. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share this morning. I've got things to do. I really gotta. Go. I've gotta make that other video. <laughs> and uh, I I need to uh, weed. I need to uh, get some things. I've got. I have the most amazing garden this year. I didn't plant as much as I usually would. And. Uh, uh, but what I planted is coming up beautifully. And there are some new things that I planted with seeds I had to use up because I got them last year uh, or the, the year before last. And it's, it's just like, so there's all this new stuff that I've never planted before. It's all coming up. And I don't get to see it <laughs> until I get back, which then a lot of it we already have bloomed out. A lot of it we're already doing. Okay. So, oh, so I'm leaving my babies, my babies, my seats, right? my special seats, often given to me by special people, right? <laughs> From their garden, heirloom seeds, this and that, and we share, of course, I always share with people. I don't get to see, right? right? Yes, okay. Oh, I'm worried to leave my animals behind, all of them. Oh, they'll be taken care of. Yes, but. Will they have it as good as they have it with me? Yeah, yes, okay. Ah, so, hmm. Yeah. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. And I hope that people will stick to the proper feeding schedule and that nobody will colic. People don't know, right? Yes, yeah, you would. Okay, so, so here's the. They want to be overly good to the animals this snag. Oh, what does it matter if I give you another? I'll just give you a shovel of corn, you know, and, and, uh, and oh, here goes the problem, for example, right? Yes. So, so I hope that people will stick to the schedule that I have for them and, and uh, not get overzealous either, right? Yeah, both ways. Balance. Yes. Listen to the owner, the master. Who you can see, obviously, oh, things are done really well here. Everybody's really healthy, this and that, right? yes. And follow, oh, the guidance, yeah? Rather than taking things into their own hands and then the trouble starts, right? Yes? Yeah. Okay, well, that's all I have to share today. I'm going to pick some peas. The peas are really, really, really coming in now. Ah! I'm going to have a nice food package to take with me. <laughs> Up there to take care of my grandchildren. So, of course. What do I choose? Or, what do I... i got to go and stay with my grandchildren. <laughs> And hope that whoever is here 
take good care of things, right? Yeah. Which one of them is my husband? Yes, he's gonna be here <laughs> helping out, doing this, doing that, while I'm gone. And I think that the give and take there, me going, taking care of our grandchildren, spending time with our children, and he gets to take care of our place here. That should work out good, shouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. There you go. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you, and I will talk to you all another time. <laughs>